So it's like, um, one of my favorite things, we talked about dissolution, disintegration, just a bit, I want to go over that more with you. One of my favorite things was, uh, there was a link on the USP website, and it was a picture of someone's in, insides, it was their colon, and there were three days worth of calcium tablets that had not disintegrated. They had it broken down, and, and doctors call these bed tablets where they'll go through your system and it'll right into the toilet, and I don't think it'd be too much fun. But um, actually, people who do radiology see it all the time. Sometimes the doctor will have someone bring a baggie and tablets and say, these pass through. So what you have there is something that didn't disintegrate. So that's when you have a tablet that you take, and it should break apart once it's in the liquid, which is in your stomach, and gets churned around. And we'll go to the lab a little bit, and we'll talk about disintegration and dissolution. So this tablet's in here. We put this one in a bit earlier. And right. you can actually see that the, the powder is here, and it's disintegrated. And if I move this around a little bit, I can actually stir it up. It's a layer of powder that has fallen apart. So the tablet has disintegrated. It's not going to sit in someone's stomach. But then you have to look at dissolution. This is just plain water. If this is a water-soluble substance, let's say that it's vitamin C, which is ascorbic acid. I'm going to do a little demonstration with vitamin C and, and what happens when it's encapsulated. Let's just say we have this tablet that has 90 milligrams of vitamin C or 60 milligrams of vitamin C. And we were to take it up to the laboratory. And we wanted to find out, yes, it disintegrated, but since it's water-soluble, if we stir it around and simulate your stomach, which is going to be moving around all day, is the vitamin C going to go in solution and can we analyze it? So you would think that when people put in their, their label that meets USP disintegration, that's very important. It is important to a certain extent. But what happens if they use so much of a floating agent, such as something we're going to talk about, magnesium stearate, when they're making this tablet, so the machines are happy, they run quickly, and they don't stick, and the tablet comes out beautifully, uh, or the capsule, and many times magnesium stearate is used in capsules. So it helps that powder flow, but maybe it can coat those particles and make it so that this does not dissolve properly. Now, when you say powder, powder flow, I don't know how to describe that. Just a bit. So when you have machine made and you're doing manufacturing, either making capsules or tablets, the powder has to be in the ability to flow. If you cut open a bag of sugar and tip it over, it'll go foam and sip it. Yeah. Now, if you were to take magnesium stearate, which is a pharmaceutical grade substance that they use, which is originally came from suet. It's an 18 and 16 carbon, carbon fat mixture bound to magnesium, and it makes things very slippery. You can get a jar of it and you put it over your hand, and it's like baby talcum powder. It's very slippery. You mix half percent, one percent, two percent, three percent, up to five percent. They use the formula sometimes, and you put it in the powder, and as it tumbles in the mixer, it'll end up shearing and coating these particles that grow the powder, so that if you mix the bag of sugar, sugar for 20 minutes with 1 or 2% magnesium straight, and you just tip it over, it would flow beautifully. It would have a lot of lose all that surface friction. So the machines love it because they are creating friction as they move, but the powder also has to be able to flow into small cavities. It has to flow into the cavity where the tablet's made. It has to flow into, and be pushed into, the cavity which holds the capsule. So that's powder flow. And machines love magnesium straight. The problem is that maybe, as you'll see in the lab, it coats particles and may inhibit the dissolution and the absorption of the product. So we'll do a demonstration. We're going to swap this out and we're going to jump to the next stage of the video and I'm going to show you what you can see. Then we're going to do another demonstration and it becomes quite dramatic when we see what this stuff can do. All right, great. Well, let's, uh, let's go to the next stage. So Ty, we were just talking about magnesium stearate right. and how it's wonderful for machines. It coats particles and makes things flow. So if you were to take water-soluble vitamin C, which is ascorbic acid, mm -hmm. just like we have with thorn, mm -hmm. and we put it into a two-piece capsule, right. and we take it out of the drum, we put it directly into the capsule, and instead of using a flowing agent, which is a large carbon fat, an 18 carbon and 16 carbon fat, such as magnesium stearate, we don't use anything. So we have to run our machines more slowly, and we might see that a little bit later in another segment of the video. But I'm going to take that's a good reason for that, right? Which you'll get to. I'm going to take the vitamin C, which is water soluble. And we're just going to put it into plain old water, stir it a few times, and this is what should happen. Yeah, vitamin basically, C. It's basically disappearing, right? And when we talked a bit earlier 
about that multiple vitamin disintegration dissolution, it has vitamin C. So you would expect it disintegrates that tablet, the vitamin C should be dissolved just as it is with pure vitamin C that we make it form. Okay. Now this company we won't show you the name. I can see it though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we bought it off the internet. And this is exactly identical to the Thorn product, except that it has the magnesium stearate, the flowing agent. And the interesting thing about magnesium stearate is it depends on how much you add to the formula. It could be a half percent, one percent, even up to five percent. That's in Remington's pharmaceutical sciences um, as an accepted pharmaceutical amount. to put that much right. Okay. And how long you actually mix the product. So the longer you mix it, the more it coats the particles, and you have electron microscopy photos of that, and you can actually see the flakes of magnesium stearate after periods of time. The more it mixes, the more it coats each particle. So what ends up happening, the coating particles, when you put it in the mixer, they can run 50% faster than we can. So that's the point of adding this magnesium stuff to it, is to so, so stearic acid. Mm -hmm. make more pills faster. Right, so they have the same issue that I do. I may be limited to running mine at 70,000 capsules in one hour. They add that ingredient, which if it was a smaller chain fat, probably wouldn't be a problem, but it's a large carbon, 18 and 16 carbon fat. And what happens, we just look at it, <clears throat> is the particles are coated with this layer of fat. Well, it's, flo it's floating, and at uh, the, uh, the camera, I'm sure you can see this, but it seems like it's floating. The interesting thing is that this will sit here for six weeks, and <laughs> we have to wait your, six weeks for my dog. Some of this is actually dissolving. You get some dissolve, but there are particles that get so much fat coated on them, and it's a it's a large carbon fat. And what happens is your digestive system it has doesn't to break this down. It doesn't even look like it's wet. You know, I mean the stuff that's floating on the Yeah. So which do you want? Now, if you look at this and this. Which would you rather have for your vitamin C? Well, I mean, obviously, that, that one, the vitamin C one, is to whatever I'm drinking. We both may have bought our vitamin C from the same manufacturer of raw material, mm -hmm. and we both have the same machine, the same bottling equipment, the same labeling equipment, but we only get to run our machine maybe 70% as fast as they do. So they get a whole lot more pills per day, and it's better for the bottom line. Mm -hmm. So this is what we do at Thorn. We don't want things that inhibit the absorption and the dissolution of something. Now people will say, oh, it's, you know, it's just magnesium stearate, it's from vegetable stores, and it's just fine and it has no effect. I really kind of disagree. I'm going to do one more demonstration. We're going to pour some vinegar into a couple of beakers, and we're going to go a little bit further with this, and we're going to show what we can do with the laws of physics. Oh, good. Okay, well, that, that sounds fun. Well.